Welcome to the Walton Pie. Today we're going to be discussing what it means for something to be orthogonal to another thing. So in English, the word orthogonal means of or relating to right angles. So in mathematics, we're going to say that two elements x and y of an inner product are orthogonal if the inner product between x and y is zero. So we're really generalizing this idea of right angles to be in things that are more dimensions than just two, as well as giving us a way of being able to determine if two things in a space where we might not necessarily think of there being angles, to still have this idea of orthogonality. So orthogonality is going to depend entirely upon what inner product we have in our space. So the most common inner product that you've probably encountered is the dot product. So if you're looking for what does it mean for two things to be orthogonal, odds are pretty high that you're doing this after you've just been introduced to the dot product. So the dot product is a function that takes two vectors and gives us back a scalar. So if we are looking at the dot product between x1, x2, x3 through xn, and then the vector y1 through yn, the dot product is going to be x1 times y1, plus x2 times y2, plus x3 times y3, and so on until we eventually get a plus xn times yn term. And that's what this sum, the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi, that's what that represents. It just says multiply the first coordinates together and then add them to the second coordinates multiplied together and add them to the third coordinates multiplied together and so on. And under this operation, two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. So if our vectors were 1, 4, negative 2 and 6, negative 1, 1, then, six, then since 1 times 6 plus 4 times negative 1 plus negative 2 times 1 is 6 minus 4 minus 2, which is 0, then those two vectors are going to be orthogonal in three-dimensional space. Now, there's also inner products on other types of spaces. So for example, you can define an inner product on functions for continuous real-valued functions to be the inner product between f and g to be the integral from 0 to pi of f of x times g of x dx. This is not the only definition of an inner product on functions, but this is a common one that you might see. And so if we were to look at sine of x and cosine of x, in the linear algebra dot product one, there's not really a way of being able to say if these are orthogonal to each other, if they come together at right angles, whatever that means. Because these are functions, they're not vectors. But in this space, on these functions, we can look at the inner product of sine and cosine. So the inner product of sine x and cosine x is the integral from 0 to pi of sine x times cosine x dx, which is going to be sine squared of x divided by 2 evaluated from 0 to pi, which, when we actually go through and do that, we get 0. Okay. So that means that under this inner product, sine and cosine are going to be orthogonal to each other. Now, you might be like, oh, this never comes up. Well, this actually comes up a little bit in Fourier analysis or um, being able to solve sorts of problems that have sine and cosine. And it's useful to have sine and cosine be orthogonal to each other in those circumstances. And so depending on the space you're working with, you might have an inner product that's not quite the dot product, but it's, it's behaving the same way that the dot product behaves on vectors. So I hope this helped make the idea of things being orthogonal make a little bit more sense. If it did, please leave a like and maybe subscribe. It really helps me to keep making these videos. If there's a type of video or just a math term that you'd like me to explain, leave it in the comment section down below. I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with all of your math.